On this episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show, we talk about exercise, manual therapy, or both. The Ask Mike Reynolds Show. Helping people feel better, move better, and perform better. Before we get to the podcast, I wanted to make sure you knew about my free online course on the introduction to performance therapy and training. If you want to learn how to get started optimizing and enhancing performance, this is the course for you. Head to MikeReynolds.com slash performance to sign up today. Welcome back, everybody, to the latest episode of the Ask Mike Reynolds Show. I am joined by the crew at Champion PT and Performance. <laughs> answering all your questions related to PT, fitness, sports performance, business, career advice, anything you need to be better at your life. So we're here in Boston answering again. I've got Mike Scaduto, Dewesh Pudel, but a lot of other people we'll get to in a second. It's a lot of people in camera right there. Dave Tilly, Lenny McCrean, Elisa Russell, Dan Pope, everybody here. Just in, in such a pleasant mood, 2021, new year, optimism, everything's better, right? Is it? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> I'm still, I still feel, I know it was weeks ago, but I'm still, something about Lenny canceling the Christmas party that's just still eating away at me. Uh, and it's I been weeks. HR, I sent HR a very angry email. I hope it got <laughs> It's been weeks. We all wear the same clothes for weeks. But anyway, but let, Len, who do we have for students today? Well, we have in the box with Duesh, who's uh, wearing the Champion Strong hoodie. We have Eric King, who comes to us from uh, Franklin Pierce University in uh, beautiful Arizona. I think they're doing a great job, a uh, beautiful job with the virus out in Arizona. Um, we have uh, Ray Stotzer, who's uh, back there in the, in the black uh, pullover. He is from UAB, uh, University of Alabama at Birmingham. Go Blazers, Ray Ray, sweet baby Ray. We have Johnny Herrera, who comes to us from Regis. University. Uh, Johnny is doing a, a, tr a tremendous job, a great job, a uh, beautiful job as a PT student. Johnny Bag of Donuts. I like it. Good stuff, everyone. What's King's nickname? T.I., the King. I like that. Oh. Didn't we have another student that was King? No, I just publicly yeah. admitted that I don't remember quite. Uh, <laughs> Jen. Have... Jen. Oh, that's right. I was, right. The... was it Jen? That was, was the only King yeah. we've had? Yeah. She was never on the nickname? podcast. Yeah, that's why I was going to say I was trying to think of like, I was trying to think of a nickname. I clearly remember you, Jen. <laughs> anyway, uh, what are we talking about? <laughs> uh, no, let's uh, let's. I think I think we should get right into the episode now. I think that would be the next logistical thing that we do. But anyway, all right. What do we got, Eric? What what's his nickname? Sorry, Jen. Yeah. Eric, not Jen King. Uh, <laughs> I have a meeting with her after this, so I'll let her know. There's no way Jen listens to the podcast anyway. Yes. She's like, she said the ship sailed with us. She's sick of us. But all right, Eric, not Jen, what is up? All right, we got John from Philadelphia. I work in a clinic that treats a lot of recreational lifters with low back pain from squats and deadlifts. My coworkers use a lot of transverse abdominus bracing and manual therapy like joint mobilizations and trigger point release to treat. I use more graded exposure to exercise and movement patterns. How do you all approach this population? Awesome. Good job, Eric. I like it. Good. Welcome to the show. Um, I love. Is Don't we love these types of questions, the this or that questions, right? Like, is there ever going to be something where we don't say both? Yeah, right. Like, ever? <laughs> is there anything? Depends. I guess. Depends. I guess so. That's true. Trump and Biden, Republican, de Democrat. I guess we'll never say both. Those are the, we, we, we can't come to any agreement, but all right. So uh, yeah, <clears throat> we hear this all the time. That's kind of funny just looking at John's thing. So you can almost see that there's almost like a, uh, like a shift in thought process within one clinic, right? Transverse abdominus and manual therapy joint modes, like it is probably a little bit more of a veteran um, physical therapist, right? That was you know, a uh, very popular treatment style, probably, I don't know, 90s, 2000s, right? Early 2000s. And, um, and now John wants to use graded exposure to exercise, which I agree with. I was just 
cracked up at the phrasing of the graded exposure to exercise. It's just, I think that's just exercise, right? Like, <laughs> but we're, we're going to slowly expose them to uh, exercise. But yeah, I mean, I, I think what it comes down to is like, is, is there a need for a paradigm shift, right? So John obviously feels like, like the current approach of a graded exposure is probably uh, the best approach, but I think you could argue that his coworkers have had some pretty successful outcomes or they wouldn't be doing it still, right? So I don't know, who wants to start this one off other than the both? We'll get back to the uh, lifters with back pain concept of that and what we can do, but I, I guess this is more of the both thing, but Pope, what do you think? I think there's a lot of pressure out there right now in kind of the social media world, at least in the physical therapy and strength conditioning world, uh, that manual therapy can be useless, you know, and I feel like a lot of folks are, you know, starting to just stop with all their manual techniques and they're not really trying it and utilizing it. You know, um, I really like the analogy that if you have a headache, if you wait a day or two, it'll probably go away. But if you take some ibuprofen, it feels better. I think manual therapy is kind of similar. And most folks that are coming to see us. They want to get some pain relief as well as get back to their activities. So why wouldn't we do both, you know? Um, but I think a lot of the research is coming out about manual therapies and long-term effects. People are starting to think, I don't need to do these. I should stop doing these. Um, it's not helpful for my patients at all. I'm going to make them rely on me. Um, I think all those things are floating around in people's heads, so they feel poorly about using them. Um, but yeah, obviously we use both, and we think that both can be helpful for folks for a variety of reasons. Dan always answers these questions so well and so politically correct and stuff. I just get irritated and Dan just, just like, like answers it well, that, which is, I, I appreciate that. That's so good. But I think, you know, that's, I think that's a really good approach, Dan, I, and, and, and a good way of saying it too. And keep in mind too, with Dan's comment on, on some of the research, kind of like casting some doubt on some of these things, just realize most of these are studies on if manual therapy works for back pain. Right. And there's, wow, there's so many limitations with that concept. We're talking about back pain. You, you literally look at the subjects from age 25 to 85. Um, and what, how do you define manual therapy? How do you define back pain? Right. It's like a ridiculous kind of like question we're trying to do. So, um, but yeah, I, a, a great way of saying it there, Dan, I think that's awesome. Dave, what do you think? Yeah. I mean, I think I'm a perfect example of someone who went through what Dan was talking about. Like early on in my career, I kind of came out and got very kind of into the pain science world. And I kind of went away from manual therapy and I was treating a lot of like, you know, non-specific low back pain. So I was obviously trying to get these people moving more so, but then as I got into more sports and started working with you guys, I realized that, you know, I needed a lot of biomechanical education as a huge role for proper strength conditioning. And so it's hilarious because like, especially when I talk to the students now and stuff like 80 to 90%, if you look at the, the base principles are the same in both things in terms of like, what are you doing with manual therapy? What is exercise doing? And I think if you frame it as manual therapy, like Dan said, is a way to help somebody be a little bit more comfortable when they exercise, why in the world would you not use both? And I think we see a lot of that in the clinic, whereas someone is like, can't tolerate even basic <clears throat> exercises. And as a new grad, you're scratching your head because there's no directional preference. It all hurts. It's chemical irritation. So I say like, okay, three to seven days, let's like educate you and try to calm you down however, and then we'll get you more on the exercise stuff. But Often, like 90% of the time I'm doing manual therapy and education to get someone to tolerate a directional preference of McKenzie or SFMA exercises with like more comfortable press ups and say, okay, do this every couple hours until I see you next week. And they come back and they feel significantly better with education, basic manual therapy, a little bit of heat and just like super down to earth, easy stuff. And it's like really not rocket science. I think people get caught up, like I said, dancing in social media. Yeah, uh, Scuduto, I want to I want to get you involved. I feel like we, we we haven't heard any wisdom from you in a while. But if if you got one of your patients is working with you and they have non-specific low back pain or something like that, right? Like, tell us about your approach a little bit. Like, how do you combine manual therapy, like in exercise, and 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 some of the benefits that combined in it? I guess. Yeah, absolutely. I, I definitely think it comes down to the assessment, kind of like what Dave was just saying. Um, if they do have a directional preference, preference, I think that can be, you know, very helpful in our treatment. Um, but overall, my general philosophy is going to be that, um, of course, we're going to use manual therapy to try to alleviate some of their symptoms. Uh, I don't necessarily know how that works um, from a physiological or a psychological standpoint, um, but if it can help decrease their symptoms in the short term. Uh, I'm all on board with that. And I think we do need to change that program over time. The program just evolves. And then you know, as we go and as they're, they're continuing to make progress and their symptoms have decreased, 
then I'm going to you know, up, up the volume or up the intensity of their workout program. So we're going to kind of slowly transition them to a more, more of a uh, exercise based program. And I think that's totally fine to do. I think um, you're allowed to have an emphasis on manual therapy early on in a treatment of a patient and slowly transition them into the emphasis as being more of a strength based or movement based program. So I think it's all about the evolution of their treatment over time uh, and eventually progressing them to the point that prepares them for what they want to do um, and what they want to return to. Right. And you know what? I, I always say too, like, and yeah, we're dealing with, you know, more of an athletic population at champion, but I think that's kind of specific to John's question anyway, with like recreational lifters, which is, you know, the fitness athletes nowadays, even in just recreational fitness athletes, like think about like, like what they're doing. They're doing, they're so much stress on their body in good ways. Cause they're adding positive stress to have positive change to their bodies. Right. And they're always stimulating things that makes your muscles sore. That makes them tight. That makes them sore. Right. They're not injured. They don't, have a back pathology right sometimes they just have low back pain because it's just some excessive stress from from training right from lifting in the gym so manual therapy is super helpful for those people to help them move better and get them moving again warm up the tissue and move so that way then you can perform your graded exposure to exercise right so we can still we can still kind of do that sort of thing with them but the manual therapy kind of helps them but remember it's not just pain that they're in their soft tissue their joint well not the joint maybe but their soft tissue is probably tired and sore from their activities that they're doing so we know manual therapy helps increase range of motion it helps improve movement patterns afterwards it helps neuromodulate pain we've seen all these things with that i mean if my hamstring hurt because i just did some sprints yesterday which i would never do by the way but let's imagine if i did right the first thing i would do is probably want to do some soft tissue on myself right and then i'm not worried about graded exposure to more sprints i'm worried about doing some some foam rolling maybe some vibration therapy even some soft tissue on myself to try to make that soft tissue feel better so that way i can then resume back into my activity so i think we got into this mess because we had too much reliance or over reliance on just manual therapy and then kick the person out of the clinic and that's all we did right that's a bad physical therapy practice right? That that's doing it wrong. That's not physical therapy. That's just a bad practice, right? It's not about that. So I think we got a bit of a bad rap, but what's happened now is everybody's poo pooed on these things. So just like everything else, if you're just doing manual therapy and you're not doing exercise, I don't know. I don't even know. I don't even think that's 50% of it, right? It's, it's, it's not enough and vice versa. If you're only doing exercise, you're not doing any manual therapy. You're definitely slowing down your outcomes and probably not even treating their biggest source of their complaints, right? It's not about you and your theories, what you want to get done with that person. That person was lifting yesterday and their hamstrings are sore. Their back's sore because they just set a PR on their deadlift. Rub their back, right? Like, just like, like, you know what I mean? Like that's, it's, it's, you're not doing a disservice to our entire profession because you're doing soft tissue on their back. They want to get back and deadlift again in three days. Let's help them feel better as soon as we can so they can get back. But of course, right? We want to include that with exercise. So put those two together. I think that's an important way of doing it. Um, it's going to be a this or that question. We're almost always going to say both, but I really think that you're missing the boat. If you do both, I think you're going to get really good success. If you do one, I think you're only going to get like 20% success in both directions, right? So it's enormous with, with putting those two together. And I think that's some of our fundamental concepts that we do at champion. And I think we've seen that work across several different athletes in different sports over time. <sighs> good. Right. All right. Do du Duesh liked it. I think we're good enough. So sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Don't. Sorry. I didn't mean to yell at you, but I wasn't yelling <laughs> at you. I wasn't yelling at you, John. But anyway, hopefully we help make a little bit difference. What I'm trying to get at is don't feel bad about doing that sort of thing. Right. If, if, if you feel that that's the most appropriate thing, do it. But just like everything else, I think there's a happy medium that we can do to really help our patients even more. So Good question, John. I know that's on a lot of people's mind. I know, uh, or is that, yeah, that was John. Uh, a lot of people's mind. I know a lot of people are failing the same way. So keep questions like that coming. We're here to answer based on our clinical experience, all the years of, of, of doing this that we're doing, we're here to help. So, so keep asking away, head to my ground, click on that podcast link and fill out the form to ask us questions. We're here for you. Anything we can do to help and we will see you on the next episode. Thanks again.